we are kind of expecting that there will be a region of about 170,000 jobs lost in Western Cape uh, in 2020 as a result of the financial impacts of the shutdown. During the last four months, communities have responded to the pandemic by mobilizing, organizing, educating, and networking. In my view, this is possibly the biggest revival of civic activism in South Africa since the 1980s. The risk of farming in this pandemic is not knowing where we're heading to. The COVID-19 crisis has uh, generally heightened awareness of the inadequacies uh, of existing food and nutrition systems. Um, and very rapidly it, uh, it started to emerge that we were going to encounter a number of difficulties, not least of all because of the fact that it's difficult to know who to prioritize, who should get, who doesn't get. Often those resources tend to be locked behind quite a constipated municipal or public uh, compliance system. It's very hard for people in communities, particularly under conditions of informality, unregistered organizations, new forms of organizations, to access formal resources in the state. So farming in this pandemic has taught us to not only look at farming as a hobby or just farming as a business, but farming to save the other people as they are in need of the food. Food system frameworks are analytically correct, but politically and institutionally complicated to work with. There are usually just too many moving parts cutting across too many different mandates, functions and budgets. The only way that we can meet humanity's needs for uh, natural resources, particularly agricultural uh, output, is through agroecological production. And agroecological production is most effectively done through small-scale farmers because it's intensive, it is more complex than uh, agro-industry, um, and it uh, produces multiple different products on the same on the same plot of land with far less material inputs and, and also at the same time far less energy intensive inputs. Historically, there are weak relationships of trust between the top-down authorizing environment of government and the bottom-up mobilizing environment of civil society. If we switched off every single internal combustion engine and coal-fired power plant, mm -hmm. every single carbon emitting source of power and um, in electricity in the world tomorrow, we would still exceed our carbon budget because the, the biggest area of carbon emissions in the world is agriculture, forestry, and other land use. And it takes a long time to get big, slow-moving, quite blunt institutions like a city council or a provincial government or a national government, and not just in this country, all over the world, to realign themselves around the food system. Uh, the most necessary support for me, Leon, is markets. Markets, 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 more markets because uh, we are not recovering yet. And I'd really like to encourage people as much as possible to be able to support small-scale producers, um, in particular because of the fact that the multiplier effects from their purchases um, are much more prevalent uh, going to be. There's been no serious, in my view, collective commitment to a transformed food system that is both nutritious and affordable and serves the needs of all citizens. Continue producing food for the community. Let's continue the love of producing in the ground. That's where the life is.